yo what's good with y'all in today's video i'm about to show you guys how to make a simple spawn command it's simply where you like you spawn in um it could really be anything honestly it could be a model it could be a part um yeah it really could be anything and stuff you just you'd have to modify it depending on what it is of course but yeah pretty much you just spawn anything before i get into the video i just want to say thank you and shout out to all of my channel members my discord members i mean like well discord subscribers it's a little confusing but channel members and discord subscribers and stuff i think in total i now have like i think like eight people and stuff so shout out to all y'all i really do appreciate the love and support and of course i appreciate everyone else's love and support you guys been going crazy i'm about to hit 1700 well i'm probably at 1700 by the time i'm recording this but anyway let's get straight into the video okay so first things first we're gonna of course insert a server script into server script service we're going to name this script Let's call it a uh, spawn command. Yes, yeah, spawn command script, right? And I'm going to delete print hello world and I'm going to set up a table for allowed users. So I'm going to say local allowed users is equal to special brackets. That's how we create a table. Then in quotation marks, you're going to put your username. If you have multiple people, like you have like a staff team or your game has like multiple developers, what you could do is you would just do comma, quotation mark, and then just so forth. You would just add in all the names, but make sure it's it's case sensitive. So you have to spell your name exactly as it is in Roblox and don't use your display name, use your username and stuff. A more reliable method, in my opinion, would be to use Roblox IDs because if a person changes their username, you'd have to update the script. But using a user ID, the person would literally have to switch accounts. Um, yeah, they'd have to switch accounts, so I'd recommend using IDs, but usernames is fine too. But anyway, let's get into the function. So let's say game dot players dot players added connect a function and print is going to PLR, which is short for the player who joined. Then enter. And I'm going to say player dot chatted connect a function and parentheses. I'm going to put MSG, which is short for message. Then I'm going to make a variable for the arguments. I'm going to say local args is equal to string dot split message for the string. And in separator, we're going to use a quotation marks. I'm gonna put a space in between those quotation marks to separate um each individual word. So I'm gonna say if args regular bracket one is equal to quotation marks, here's where you put your, your command. So I'm gonna for me it's gonna be colon spawn. Right? So if the first word the person says is spawn, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna use ands rather than like two different rather than like three different if statements. So I'm gonna say if their first word is spawn and Table that find allowed users, then you put their name, so player.name. So if they won, say colon spawn and their name is in the allowed users table, and if game dot server storage find first child args regular bracket two, because remember the second word the player should say is the name of the tool or item that they're trying to spawn, right? So if you can locate that in server storage and enter. Or you could also store it in replicated storage. It's up to you, honestly. Because if you you could store something in the replicated storage, and if that was the case, um, then you would do uh, then you would do uh, replicated storage instead. Or if you have things that are in replicated storage and server storage, I would recommend probably using a second if statement. And you would say if if um if game that server storage find first child or game that replicated storage find first child. But yeah, we're gonna clone the item. So let me go ahead and put an item. Um, I'm, I'm just going to put a part in server storage. I'm just going to anchor the part so it just doesn't fall through the map. And I'm going to put it inside of server storage. So I'm going to say local item clone is equal to game dot server storage find first child r regular brackets. Oh, sorry, not three, two. And I'm going to say clone. Okay. Then I'm going to set the C frame. So I'm going to say dot C dot c frame is equal to c frame dot new or actually no i can get into that after i'm gonna say player dot character dot humanoid root part dot c frame mm, yeah i think that should be good times c frame dot new and in parentheses i'm gonna say negative one comma negative two comma or let's do negative 2.2 comma negative 15 you guys can mess around with these numbers to to get whatever to just get it to like spawn exactly how you want it like depending on how far how far away you want it how high above the ground you want it you can mess around with that to see and then of course last i'm going to set the parent to the workspace the game dot workspace and boom just like that we have set up a simple um spawn command let me go ahead and just test this out real quick 
So make sure you're typing your item exactly as it's spelled in server storage. So spawn part. Boom, as you guys can see, it is in front of me, a little above the ground. Like I said, you guys can change these numbers and stuff to mess around with it until you get your desired result. But yeah, that's the make a spawn command. Yeah, shout out to the person in my Discord server who suggested this, and I hope this video was helpful. If it was, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.